In this video, I will determine the irreducible representations of the four chloridal ligands in this transition metal complex. The UPAC name of this complex is tetrachloridoplatinate 2 or tetrachloroplatinate 2 as its common name. So the formal charge on each this chloridal ligand is negative 1. The formal charge on the platinum is plus 2. Overall, the complex has a 2 minus charge. Now let's look at the structure of this complex. It's square planar with a D4H point group. These are the symmetry operations within this D4H point group. There are 10 different classes. And then over here, there are 10 different irreducible representations. And over here, those are the characters of those irreducible representations. And this column tells you the irreducible representations of the rotations. Rz, Rx, Ry are the rotations about the z, x, and y axis. Also the translations, z, x, y translations. And also it tells you the irreducible representations of the PZ, PX, and PY atomic orbitals centered on the platinum atom. And now quadratic functions. So in this cell, it tells you the symmetry of the PZ squared orbital on the platinum center has a A1G symmetry. DX squared minus Y squared has a B1G symmetry and XY has a B2G symmetry. DX, D, D, Y, Z are degenerate. They have a EG uh, symmetry or irreducible representation. And you can also do a combination of this. If you do a sum of this, you will see it's going to be spherical. It tells you the symmetry of the S orbital on the platinum is A1G. How about those cubic functions? They tell you the irreducible representations or the symmetry of the F orbitals centered on the platinum center. Now let's look at the structure again. Square planar. I'm going to explain why it adopts a square planar structure. And also, without counting, we know this platinum is surrounded by 16 valence electrons. I'm going to explain why later. And now let's look at this character table. First, uh, we have this characters in the A1G row here. And then we have this characters with some positive numbers, some negative numbers in the A2G row. So what does this number mean? This negative 1 means uh, when you do a C2 prime symmetry operation, the sign of the orbitals will change. So let's look at uh, this uh, transition metal complex. First, we need to apply the symmetry operations to this complex and see how many atoms or ligands or sigma bonds remain in their original positions after the symmetry operation. So first, this E means identity symmetry element. It means doing nothing. If we do nothing, all four ligands, all the four sigma bonds remain in their original positions. So we put a number four here. How about C4? C4 means we rotate uh, this transition metal complex about the z-axis 90 degrees. If you do that, all four ligands or sigma bonds will move away from their original position. So zero ligands remain in their original positions. Same here, if you rotate this four ligands about the principal axis, uh, this is C2, uh, that means 180 degrees. This chlorine will become here, and this chlorine will move to here. Therefore, we put a zero here. Okay, now C2 prime. C2 prime are this axis, this two axis. If you rotate this complex about this C2 prime axis, okay, this two chlorine ligands will remain in the origin position. So we put a number two here. So what are those C2 double primes? There are two C2 double primes. Uh, you have one C2 double prime here and another C2 double prime here. And you can tell if we rotate the complex about this axis, 180 degrees, all four ligands will move. Therefore, we'll put a zero here. I is the inversion center. Again, the inversion will move all four ligands out of their position. And S4 means we do a 
rotation first, followed by a reflection. So that means we rotate this 90 degrees and then followed by a reflection. All four ligands will move away from their origin position. Sigma H. Sigma H is this uh, sigma plane that contains uh, all four atoms. Therefore, if you do a reflection, with respect to this sigma H, the four ligands remain in their original position. So we put a number four here. So two sigma Vs. The two sigma Vs uh, contain two chlorine ligands. So you have one sigma V here, cutting this uh, uh, complex into halves, and you have another sigma V here. So if you apply this sigma V symmetry operation, we have two uh, ligands remaining in their original position. So what about sigma D? Sigma D, or this is one sigma D. Again, we're cutting this complex into halves. But this sigma D is different from this sigma V. If you do a reflection about this sigma D, uh, this chlorine will go here, and this chlorine will go here. So this two chlorine will swap. This chlorine will swap. That's why we put zero here. OK, now we have the number of atoms that remain in their original positions in uh, after the uh, corresponding symmetry operations. Now we multiply this by the order of the symmetry operations. What are the order of the symmetry operations? The numbers are here and also in here. What does this mean? What does this 2 mean? This means, well, we can do C4, either 90 degrees or 270 degrees. Therefore, we have two such symmetry operations. What about 180 degrees? If you rotate you know, this uh, molecule about this C4 axis 180 degrees, it's actually C2. So we actually put C2 here. And also, we have this S4, 2S4, which means you rotate the complex 90 degrees or 270 degrees followed by a refraction. What if you rotate the molecule or the complex 180 degrees followed by a refraction? That's actually just I. The inversion center is equivalent to uh, doing this S4 twice. All right, and then uh, again we have two sigma v's, two sigma d's. That's why we have those numbers here. Those numbers are the uh, number of symmetry operations in each of this so-called symmetry operation class. So those, we have ten symmetry operation classes, and in each class, you in this case you may have either one or two different symmetry operations. So we do the multiplication between this row and this row. And you get uh, these numbers as a product. I'm going to click this to show you the equation. J16 times J1. So we got these numbers. We're not done yet. We're then use these 10 numbers in this row multiplied by the 10 numbers in the A1G row and then the 10 numbers in the A2G row and then the 10 numbers in the B1G row. And then we can make a new table here. And how do we do this? Uh, again, I'm going to just click this number. You can see it's B$17 times B4, so this number. All right, so once we're done with this uh, multiplication, we can drag it from left to right to uh, fill this row. And also, I'm going to show you this B2U, B$17, this cell, uh, times B12. Let's look at B12. B12, that's the first character in the B2U row. So we, we do that as well, and then we drag it from left to right. So we have 10 numbers in each of the 10 rows of the 10 different irreducible representations. And then we're going to get the sum of each row. So the sum of the first row is this. The, the sum of uh, the last row, again, is uh, uh, obtained by using the Excel function equals sum. And then this number should be a integer multiple of 16. If any number is not an integer multiple of 16, you did something wrong. This is because later you'll see, we're going to use this sums divided by the order of the D for each point group, which happens to be 16 here. So we have to use this 16 divided by 16, 0 divided by 16, and we get this 10 numbers for the 10 irreducible representations. And these 10 numbers must be integers. Therefore, uh, the sums should be integer multiples of 16. Now we get 10 integers. So what do those integers mean? Well, they are just the number of irreducible representations that ligands may form. In this case, we have four ligands. So we're looking for four different irreducible representations. 
So we can form one A1G, one B1G, and then one EU. Why only three? Actually, this EU means a degeneracy of two. So actually, there are two different uh, irreducible representations being included here. They just happen to have the same energy. So one, two, three, four. All right, now let's look at the shape of the irreducible representation of the four ligands. Let's look at A1G. So again, you have four ligands or four sigma bonds. They may have exactly the same face, plus, 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 plus. And this irreducible representation will interact with a atomic orbital or atomic orbitals centered on the transition metal center with the same A1G symmetry. So what is that? If we look at this, it's going to be totally symmetrical. So really, this four ligands with this A1G irreducible representation will interact with DZ squared and also uh, the uh, S orbital, the 6S orbital. All right, now let's look at B1G. So this is the uh, B1G irreducible representation formed by these four ligands. You have plus, plus, minus, minus here. And this uh, irreducible representation, B1G, will interact with B1G. So we have to look for B1G. B1G here, it's x squared minus y squared. Therefore, this irreducible representation formed by the four ligands with a B1G symmetry will interact with this dx squared minus y squared atomic orbital centered on the platinum atom. All right, how about EU? So we have two degenerate EUs formed by the four ligands. This one and this one. This one will interact with the PX orbital of the platinum. This one will interact with the PY orbital of the platinum. Now let's think about it. If this EU, irreducible representations of ligands, can only interact with the P orbital. So these two have no impact on the D orbitals of the transition metal. Therefore, uh, we can say uh, this uh, in this case, uh, this two degenerate orbitals will bump up the uh, PX and PY atomic orbitals in the energy diagram, but has no impact on the D orbitals. All right, this one will interact strongly with the DX squared minus Y squared orbital because they have the same symmetry and because the overlap is significant. What does that mean? This will bump up the energy of the dx squared minus y squared orbital significantly. And therefore, this orbital will typically be unoccupied. And that's why, unlike many other transition metal complexes with 18 valence electrons surrounding the center of uh, transition metal, uh, usually when you have platinum, two, palladium two, rhodium one, iridium one, with a D8 electron configuration, uh, you tend to see this kind of phenomena with only 16 valence electrons instead of 18 surrounding the transition metal center. Because this DX squared minus Y squared orbital becomes a very high energy anti-bonding orbital and is unoccupied. All right, finally, this A1G, uh, this A1G will mostly interacting with uh, the uh, 6S orbital on the uh, platinum atom. It will interact with the DZ squared orbital, uh, but just by a little bit, just by a little bit. Also, uh, because of the uh, mixing between the uh, 6S and this 5DZ squared orbital. So again, in the platinum atom, in this D4H point group, the DZ squared orbital and the 6S orbital have the same A1G symmetry. So they interact with each other. They may mix with each other. And the mixing effectively lower the energy of DZ squared. So therefore, among the 5D orbitals, only this DX squared minus Y squared orbital has much higher energy than the other four orbitals. Therefore, this is the only unoccupied orbital in this transition metal complex. And similarly, in many other uh, transition metal complexes with a D8 transition metal center, 
with a d4h pointer group.